Welcome back to this video series on multi-sampler. In this video, I'm going to go over the sound shaping controls. Those are the knobs that are located in this area. It's just to the left below the waveform display. What's special about these controls is they can be modulated by the ADSR envelope or the LFOs that are located in this section on the right. Now we'll go over that more later, but here are the basic sound shaping controls. We have pitch, pan, velocity, sensitivity for MIDI, gain, and we have a filter section that's controlled by this set of controls here. In this video, I'm gonna go over how each of these works. Now I've got a pad sound set up on the keyboard, so if I play a note, that's unmodified, unfiltered. If we start with the pitch knob, you'll see that I can go up and down in pitch with that knob. Pitch will let you go up and down three octaves. This is going down three octaves. Or you could go up three octaves. And if you want to set a specific thing, like going up one octave, then you can double click in this area, then type in 12, which is 12 semitones, and that will take you up one octave. Double click on the control to reset it to its default value. Now pitch adjusts smoothly, so if you apply an LFO or an ADSR to this, you can get smooth pitch shifting, which you've heard as I play and manipulate this control directly. So we'll show you more how to connect that up in a later video. The next knob is pan. Pan is pretty obvious what it does. So as you turn it to left, you're hearing the left channel. As you turn it right, you're hearing the right channel. If you have a mono signal, then it will actually shift the sound to the left or right. So that allows you to create an auto panning function if you connect that up to an LFO. Just like before, if you double click, that will take it back to the default. Velocity sensitivity adjusts the sensitivity to incoming MIDI velocity data. With the knob fully to the right, the sensitivity is 100% of incoming MIDI velocity. As you turn it left, the sensitivity is reduced. And then the next knob is gain. Gain adjusts the overall volume of the sound, and this can be automated to give you volume or amplitude modulation effects when co combined with the ADSR, or you can get a tremolo effect when combined with an LFO. There's a wide range of gain control on here, so you can get plus 10 dB of gain, but then you can go all the way down to essentially turning your signal off with this control. Again, double clicking will reset it by playback. You can see that you can dynamically operate this as well. So if you want to create an interesting tremolo effect, you could combine that by using an LFO to control both panning and gain at the same time for a really kind of cool tremolo effect. Bottom controls starting with this button, enable or disable the filter. So if we turn the filter on, then we can select from a type of filter. If you click on the mode selector, you'll see modes that include low pass, band pass, high pass, and notch. The low pass, band pass, and high pass filters also have the option for 12 dB or 24 dB per octave filters. The 12 dB filters are a bit more gradual, while the 24 dB filters give you a steeper drop off the cutoff frequency. Now the cutoff frequency can be adjusted with this knob right here. And it, this is the center frequency for the bandpass and notch filters and the corner frequency for the others. Now, if you choose a bandpass filter, then it enables the Q parameter. Now with Q set to zero, the filter is very wide. And it's with it, when it's set to one, you've got a very, very narrow filter. Let's try a bandpass filter. We'll set that to bandpass filter with the 12 dB per octave and then I'll adjust the Q and then we can modulate the cutoff frequency manually to get kind of a cool filter sweep effect.
Now with a high pass filter selected, you can adjust this cue until you get into a area of resonance. That's with a high pass filter. So that's a demonstration of the sound shaping controls that you have available in multi-sampler. Now one thing to point out is that all of these controls are available for every single sound layer. So if you create a setup that has 20, 30, or 100 different layers, each of those layers has access to all of these controls. So you can use these in a simple way to tweak the sample for static playback of the sample, but it gets even more interesting when you combine it with the modulation sources over on the right. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in another video very soon.